I was born in 1956 to parents that are Christians and attended the Free Methodist Church in our hometown of Evansville, Indiana. Sunday was a day that we attended church, no questions asked. So I was exposed to the gospel message and developed an understanding at a very early age that there was a God, and more specifically, a Savior to whom we needed to have a saving relationship if we were going to make it to heaven and avoid eternity in hell. That last part was never far from my mind. At family reunions, both mom and dad sides of the family, Christian discussions would ensue and at times often talking about Christ's second coming. As a young child, I would often overhear them. One thing my parents did give me, as an aside, was a love for waterfowl by giving me ducks for pets. Uh, but more on that later. In church, I had friends and peers with our youth group called Christian Youth Crusaders, or CYC for short. The youth group had activities and places to go organized by the youth leaders. While, we never far, while never far from fully accepting Christ as my personal savior through my early teen years, I never made that decision. We had great youth, lead, youth group leaders. In those later teen years also, for some reason, the girls seemed to become a little more interesting. The Holy Spirit would at times remind me of my need to accept Christ as my personal savior. One time in particular, I recall him mention that I was slipping further away. Nothing more was said. I knew what he was saying. Graduating high school, I was dating one of those girls from my youth group, and I was attending also a local college in, natural resource, in a natural resource curriculum with interest in wildlife management. In those days of the 60s and 70s, there were altar calls at church, there were revival meetings, and there was the occasional Billy Grimm crusade on TV that my mom and dad always watched. I would usually also listen to, uh, to them at the, uh, watching the TV at Billy Grimm. I would shudder for the plain and simple message that Graham would give at the end of those times about the need to accept Jesus. Still, I made no decision, and I did have other friends where Christian influence was not a priority for things we were doing. Revival meetings seemed to grow more and more serious as I grew older, and while knowing I needed to accept Jesus, I never made that decision, even up to high school graduation. Still, I enjoyed going to church to be with friends in the youth group, and as well as dating the one I mentioned earlier. My family has always been interested in aviation, as I have also from my childhood up. One Sunday in 1974, after high school graduation, I began to sense an awareness of making a decision to accept Christ and make a choice of following him. I could not shake that thought that day. After Sunday morning service, my dad wanted to go where we enjoyed duck hunting in a wildlife area called Hovey Lake, and it was managed by the Indiana Department of Natural Resources. And yes, I love ducks for pets, and I do also like to hunt them as well. So uh, sometimes people have a hard time understanding that. After spending some time looking around at Hovey, we went back home. When, as we drove past the Mount Vernon Airport, Dad saw a biplane out front. He decided to stop and look it over. I looked as well. A very beautiful yellow Grumman Ag Cat with a big radio engine up front. For some reason, it did not seem to matter much, though. My mind was not on that airplane. <laughs> the Holy Spirit was telling me I needed to make that decision. I went to church that evening, and following the sermon, an altar call was given. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit made it clear that I needed to make that decision now and go forward. I struggled with the thought as the invitation song was sung. As the last verse ended, I was still standing in the pew, not going forward. And there were several people already gathering at the altar to pray. Again, the Spirit said, I needed to go today, now. What was keeping me? Finally, I joined that group already in prayer. After the prayer had ended, I asked the group if they would pray for me. And I did accept Christ that night as my Savior. The next day was very different, and I knew that. I told my best friend about it. My outlook changed, and God began to work in me living the life of a Christian and opening a lot of doors for me. I had no call or sense to go into ministry, but to continue my pursuing career in wildlife management. God opened doors in that career, which in a year and a half, I had a job working at Hovey Lake, a waterfowl management area. 
My life took off after that trip to the altar that night. And after pursuing a degree in wildlife management at Purdue University and continuing to work some years at Hubby Lake and later full time, the opportunity came to move up into a professional position at a place called Crosley Fish and Wildlife Area, also by the Indiana Department of Natural Resources. After getting started there, I began attending the Church of the Nazarene and meeting folks my age who also had a strong youth group background. One girl from that group caught my eye, and eventually she caught me about a year later to be married at an altar as well. God had to stay at Crosley and serving in that church for 10 years. Then God moved Deb and I up with three boys to a house at Thief Lake Wildlife Management Area, north of Thief River Falls, working for the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources. Thief Lake is a nationally known waterfowl management area. We began attending the Thief River Falls E Free Church for about a year and transferred to another church closer to Thief Lake during uh, serving at the New Folden E Free Church. That was a long drive. You had to pack a, trunk, a, a lunch going to uh, Thief River Falls, and it just got to the point where, uh, well, New Folden was closer, and we enjoyed going there too, so we started there. In 2006, we moved to Bemidji, as now I had accepted a DNR regional wildlife management job position overseeing all sorts of wildlife management work, including waterfowl, over one quarter of the state, and have attended the E-Free Church here to this day. I can hardly think of that day looking over that Grumman Ag Cat without tears in my eyes and be forever thankful for the long-suffering grace God gave me that night. And every day since that time, I give thanks for parents that made it a priority for me to be in church every week and for Quack and Waddle, the name of the ducks my parents first gave me. I also thanks for the church youth group that we attended and for the resolute church youth group leaders, for people who have prayed specifically for me in becoming a Christian. I have an example of that. Here's a letter written to me in 1973 by my Sunday school teacher. Her name was Pearl Stosey. She uh, was praying for me, an elderly lady. She uh, had encouraged me to read my Bible daily and pray daily as well, and uh, some other things too. So I'm very good for her. <clears throat> At any rate, I can say a lot much more about what happened after the day the Spirit called me to that altar. That would be a much longer story.